Hello my friends and welcome finally to my video on copper peptides and skincare. We've got a lot to cover as always timestamps and links are in the description box below and I think the best place to start this video is a quick recap of all of the reported benefits of copper peptides in skincare. So I'll just pop those up on the screen for you. That is taken from Dr. Picard's 2018 study and that's a lot of supposed benefits. That certainly does explain why there's so much curiosity around copper peptides, but we're gonna dig so much deeper. Let's kick this video off by talking about the science. Copper peptides were discovered in the 1970s by Dr. Lauren Picard, who we will talk more about in this video. What's interesting about copper peptides is that they are naturally present in our skin. And if your skin experiences any kind of damage, you'll actually find a higher level of copper peptides as a consequence because copper peptides are associated with skin repair. For those of you who are fellow skincare enthusiasts, you might be excited by the very concept of skin repair. And so was Dr. Picard who realized this could have big implications in terms of skincare. Is this skincare ingredient perfect? Well, listen, let's have some honest conversations here, okay? So a lot of companies will tell you that copper peptide is the most studied form of peptides. And while that probably is true, it's not really the flex that some of these brands think it is. Hate to be the one to tell you, I really do, but a lot of the research on copper peptides involves animal testing. A lot of the research on copper peptides is in a dish. There is very little that has actually been done on human participants, and when it has, unfortunately, often it lacks controls or a long enough study. It was so frustrating as I was looking at some of the websites that sell copper peptides products, they cite their sources and you can go down and see their sources and it says a pilot study. Do we need to start with what a pilot study is? It's like a pilot show of a sitcom, yes? <laughs> Listen, this is not me being a hater. This is simply me trying to tell you the honest truth about what's behind our skincare ingredients. Now, as far as some of the questions you all asked on my post, I by far had the most questions asking, how much of copper peptide should I be using? What percentage of copper peptide is effective in skincare? And also, what can and can't that ingredient be combined with? And guess what? I'm gonna do my first reaction video. Not, not really, just a very short reaction. This is not a reaction video channel. Remember Dr. Picard, the father of copper peptides? Well, I found a video interviewing him that was uploaded by a peptide company that sells his products. And uh, let's just take a look at it together. Oh, really quickly, before I show you this, I wanna note that I am not doing any cutting in this video. And if you do wanna watch the full video, I'll have it linked in the description box below. Okay, let's do it. Repair, anti-wrinkle and anti-aging. Mm -hmm. What concentration of DHK copper peptide do you consider to be effective and optimal for use in cosmetics? Okay, then 3% is the highest I go. And I'm just cautious. I don't wanna go beyond 3%, okay? And so that is where it's at now. The like our 3% serum people do like. And some of this comes out of animal experiments. I'm gonna pause it here because for me personally, I do not think that animal experiments are helpful in the context of human skin. I do feel like that conversation is somewhat helpful, even though I also feel it didn't entirely answer the questions. Again, I'm not sure if the interview itself was cut, but I wanted to include that clip because I do find it so interesting that he, the father of copper peptides, was talking about exercising caution. Why do we need to exercise caution with copper peptides? After a whole lot of digging, here's what I'm gonna tell you. I suspect that copper peptides indeed may be great ingredients, but some amount of people have reported issues with using them. Some people have even reported the exact opposite of the benefits I talked about in the intro. People have said copper peptides gave them sagging skin. There's a whole name for this. It's called copper peptide uglies. Y'all gave this a name, let me tell you. Now what I suspect could be possibly going on is 
too much copper peptide. Every skincare ingredient that we talk about has an effective dose and a dose that beyond that you don't see further benefits. Sometimes you see the opposite. A few more notes on the amount of copper peptides. Now I've seen formulators recommend as low as 0.05% copper peptides in a product, but I did find Dr. Picard's own skincare company. And on his website, he says that 0.3% or higher copper peptide serums will be blue in appearance. And that's how you know it's good. Yes, he really did do a Jesse Pinkman, that is correct. As far as what you can and can't mix it with, remember how I said there's not actually a lot of human studies with this? Let me be honest with you again. That is going to make this very difficult to answer. What I did find is that quite a few companies recommend not pairing their copper peptide serums with ingredients like retinol and AHA, while other companies seem to say, oh no, that's a-okay. Remember that because we don't really have research here, it's a bit of a free-for-all, but it does seem that some companies make these suggestions to help prevent irritation. And then other companies, such as one we will talk about later in this video, say it is fine to combine this with retinol. Again though, it's a free-for-all. That same company suggests not pairing it with AHA and BHAs. It does seem that the one generally agreed upon ingredient to never combine copper peptides with is vitamin C. And by this, I do not mean the vitamin C derivatives. I mean L-ascorbic acid. Let me just take a moment to say that this is not because of a pH interaction. Instead, this seems to be a reaction that could potentially occur with ascorbic acid and with copper peptides used together. The one catch is, again, because we do not have research on this, it's difficult to say for sure whether that will actually happen in your skin or if you would need very different conditions for that reaction to actually take place. Let's move on to talking about my experience with copper peptide products. Now, I have to tell you in advance, I did not really know I was going to be doing this video, so I'm not coming here with a bunch of before and afters really trying to sell you on copper peptides. It's not going to be like that, but I will tell you my experience with these, and I can share a little more about this one in particular, which I have been using recently. One thing I did want to say before I get into this section is I had a lot of questions about the Neod Copper Amino Isolate Serum. Unfortunately, I haven't tried that. However, I did find a video where Penn Smith was talking about that. So I will include a link to that in the description box below. So sorry to disappoint. It seems like some of you really are the knights who say Neod. As for my experiences, I'm going to start with the Ordinary's Multipeptide and Copper Serum. This serum is the Ordinary's Multipeptide Serum with the addition of copper peptides. So you also have in here some of your neurotransmitter inhibiting peptides. You have your matrixyl peptides in addition to your natural moisturizing factors, two forms of hyaluronic acid, and amino acids. When I finished my bottle of this product, I didn't really feel it did anything in addition for me from the regular multi-peptide serum. Which is why the multi-peptide serum is the one that I have in my hand. I've repurchased this a number of times, whereas for me, the copper peptide just didn't stick. And one more thing I do want to tell you with that one, I know I told this story a long time ago, but I got to reiterate it. Every time I used that, my partner gave me grief. <laughs> I do not have a strong nose, so I never really smelled the copper. She smelled it every time, even when I tried to be sneaky. I thought I could say, oh, oh no, I, I definitely didn't use it tonight. She would go, yes, you did. And whatever that smell was, she did not like it. She did not. She would roll over and go, I cannot with your face. <laughs> Again, that is just my experience. There are many people who absolutely love the Ordinary's Copper Peptide Serum, and you know how I roll on this channel. If you are a person who loves that or hates it, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. This is Peach and Lily's Copper Peptide Pro Firming Serum. It is a new release from them, and I'm ready to tell you all about my experience with this product. It is, in fact, my favorite. And a $49 retail, not too bad, but more on how to get uh, better deals in just a moment. Let's talk about this first, because I feel like at least some of you have to be going, 
Hold on a second, Alice. So you're telling me that this product with only 0.2% copper peptide was actually better than the ordinary's 1%? Yeah, for me, for me, everybody has different experiences, but for me, yeah. So let's talk about what could possibly be going on here. Wow. Are you seeing the amount of peptides in this? There are so many peptides in this product and some of them are really interesting to me. First of all, tripeptide 1 is in this product. That's GHK and something you should know about GHK is that it does bind to copper. So copper that is already present in your skin binds to this. Tetrapeptide 30, that's one of my personal favorite peptides to see for fighting hyperpigmentation. Now, I've talked about that when we talked about Edom's products. It is a peptide that was studied not just in terms of hyperpigmentation on fair skin tones. A lot of studies only look at that. They tested people of all skin tones to make sure that their peptide actually delivers no matter people's skin tone. We have specific peptides in this serum that target the under eye area, that target under eye bags. Do you know how nice that is to see in a product? So rather than having to use the Ordinary's multi-peptide serum and then also grab their multi-peptide eye serum and use that and this, just this, just one serum and I can apply it everywhere. And one more, one more. Do you all see that Aquatide ingredient? How many of you are familiar with K-Beauty products? Are you familiar with the brand Logically Skin? We talked about this ingredient ages ago. This is a peptide wherein they say that it can help to stimulate autophagy. And look at everything I had to add into the other section with this product. There, there's so much else going on here. We have seven different forms of hyaluronic acid, which by the way, may actually have synergistic effects, I'm gonna add in a clip of me applying this. It is a little watery, but still usable, and I like that there is no smell in this product. Here's the thing though. Do I like this product because of the copper peptide, or do I like this formula and it contains copper peptide? To be honest with you, the latter would be more consistent with my past experiences. All I can say is that at the end of the day, this did end up becoming my personal favorite. Now again, it's available at Ulta. Ulta's really good about doing sales, 10X promotions. That's when I bought mine. If you want more information on Ulta, I have an old video. I've never updated it because it hasn't really changed all that much. And my friends, that brings us to the end of the copper peptides video. I hope this was helpful. I hope it was. I'm so sorry that I can't thoroughly answer every last question. I, I do feel bad about that. But everything is linked in the description box below, including citations if you would like to read up more on this ingredient. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you all next time.